so far? I mean, we're on day what? Yeah, we're four. Four. Yeah, we're halfway through now. Yeah. yeah. Tonight's show is the halfway point. Halfway point, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Saturday's last day. Um, looks like we're on 50% to sell for most. Uh, most states are selling out. Most states are really slow tickets. Yeah. Um, Leeds sold out officially yesterday, I believe. Barbons probably going to sell it shortly. Glasgow's definitely going to sell. Plymouth and Newcastle sold out. So. We've had some feral shows as yes, well leading up yes. to this as well. Yeah. I've seen not only the pictures but some footage that's turned up online that has uh, been pretty chaotic. Um, yes, I've not even gone through half of it so far. Like yeah. every day I'm waking up to tags of people like on on a dolphin being kicked around, people fall off balconies and things like that. Like, Mayo on the ceiling. Yes, mayo on the ceiling. That was that was a new one for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've had people turn up to gigs and throw cheese at each other, but. Uh, this is the first time we've had people score a show with uh, mayonnaise. So we're breaching new ground, people. We're breaching new ground. <laughs> you feel like it's almost become a little bit of a, like a, a competition, a challenge for people, fans, for listeners to come along um, and do the wildest things possibly kind of apply in the show. Kind of. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Man. People, people come with the intention to get out of hand. Yeah. 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 Having like, this, yeah. With also like what we put out as a video, it is a party. Yes, <laughs> that is the thing. So it's not like it's mental, as in folk are spin kicking each other's teeth out. But as I say, it's inflatables. It's fun. It's red cups and party hats and streamers and inflatable. It's that sort of thing. I mean, people so do get pretty hard out there as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that there, you are absolutely right. Right there. So you do em- embody and embolden a whole party anthem and a party time and have a good time and so on. But of course, there is a ton of aggression that comes with yeah, it's not sure. just the live show but the music in general. How do you balance that, like for yourselves, not only playing the, like the aggressive music, but trying to keep the show fun for everyone out there and remind everybody to have a good time as well? How do you do that? I think part of just kind of balls the whole kind of your kind of cathartic, like your deep kind of desire just to let loose and just go fucking nuts and like it's kind of like a judgment free zone. Just go to metal gig, just let loose, fucking well, do dumb shit, get would, on top of the flavor. I would also say as well that like the like the border for entry, yeah. a metal show, you can literally do anything oh, yeah, that yeah. you want, and folk will stand there and go, "Oh, that's interesting." Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, well. I remember it quite vividly when you went out on tour with Guar. Yeah. That I think that was like so per- at the time on paper I was like why is that a thing? But then as I say like it makes so much more sense now today because as I say the influence and things like that stage show blah 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 all these things it's completely different music yes mm-hmm. but as I say you picking little influences bits and bobs from other bands to then make your show exactly how you want it to be you know? What limits your cr- imagination when it comes to creating uh, the party kind of environment in a live show? W- w- what, where are the limits to your de- create creativity? Well, probably how much, dumbness. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> like, how much space is in the van as well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been a fact like, this is a good idea, will it fit in the van? <laughs> yeah, and if I can get the paint off my hands before we actually start the show. Will the, will the like, venue stop us and like, you can't do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, you had, have you had that happen today at any point where you have had something in mind where ultimately the limits, whether it be the van or the venue, kind of stopped you being able to do it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, today, today was a water pistol, uh, which was just kind of like a throwaway thing about when we did our anniversary gig for the Parnatic EP in London, we turned up and the guy went, okay, strictly no confetti. And we had about a ton of confetti with us. <sighs> yeah. And yeah, we That's had happened multiple times. Like, even local shows which uh, I've helped promote, mm. 
we're standing on stage and then the venue owner walks over to me and goes, you better not have any confetti. <laughs> and we're, I'm standing there with it all under my arm. It's like, uh, yeah. so no confetti tonight then. So We, we had like an extra amount of confetti that night as well. Uh, we had our original guitarist come out and get disemboweled with uh, fake organs. But when he burst, they were full confetti. So like, okay, here's a compromise. We'll take the organs out and scoop them on stage so they stay there. But straight away, someone grabbed them, swung it around yeah. and it just turned out that I had the most confetti ever in it, and it covered the entire venue. Yeah. We got, that was the end of the set, we got that close to knocking confetti everywhere. Yeah. Hell of a memory though, right? Oh, totally. Like, well, the thing is, I came on stage, I was like really, really worried about it. And I went up to the room, I was like, I'm really sorry about confetti. I think someone else brought it. I went, don't worry, they don't care about confetti. They're more worried about the guy that's maced his eyes with hot sauce. Oh, no way! So this guy bought three <laughs> sorry bottles for of. <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> he, he's, he's fine now. So <laughs> you say yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, he bought three bottles of. We had a little bit of hot sauce for these gigs. He bought three bottles. What obviously one to take home, yes. But he jumped on stage and he tried to like neck both of them at once. He did the Steve Austin, <laughs> but he didn't use beer. He like used clicked them together. And, but he got them all in his, his eyes. eyes, not his mouth, just his eyes. And he had to go to the hospital and get his eyes flushed. I'm not going to lie, even though that's a horrible thing to just, like, process, the photo of his face <laughs> is, is amazing because it's, like, legitimate shock, like, and worry of what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, there's, like, a video where a guy's, like, doing it. I mean, it pans, like, me and her singer were just looking at her, like, oh, is this what happening? What is <laughs> happening? We, and not even encouraged, either. It's just, this guy did it of his own accord, sort of thing. Like. It didn't really occur to me that he have to go to the hospital and get his eyes flushed yeah, when I came out to get yeah, yeah. So I was a bit of relief. Oh, they're not my angry about the cafe at least. <laughs> drums, 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 Do you have any expectations on a city to deliver something? Well, what what do you need to see tonight to walk away satisfied? Sweaty people. Yeah, yeah. some sweaty people, some satisfied people. People. Yeah. Um, since we were playing our pint glass and stuff, it's always good to see like visits being having on tour. People turn on high visits, then they leave with high visits on and fire hand shirts under me. So that kind of yeah. means it's been a good night. Yeah. People have been won over, or people have come with a good expectation of what to know. But London's always good. Um, it's always packed. It's always busy. And it's good to be playing in the garage of all places. Yes, yeah, yeah that's a big one for us. Um, yeah, exactly. As that long was... as people get into it, as long as people walk in circles, having a good time, as long as no one's literally dead afterwards, we're good. Yeah, I've personally witnessed so many gigs standing in the crowd with everybody else. It was quite nice to sit in a room of this teal colour and be like, this is what it's like, sort of thing. Mm. So, yeah, the, yeah, the circle is completing, sort of thing. <laughs> it's a weird one, yeah. yeah. But, to draw a line under like, what would be a success. As long as people get involved and have a good time, as long as people aren't like centered, like dead faced, because that's not what yeah. it's about. Like it's cool if you want to do it. But yeah. As long as people down the front, like Yeah, we try yeah, our like, best to engage you as as much as possible. And as I say, if they're just statues, there's no point. Thing is I feel like it's a safe it's safe. You know that isn't gonna be the case. You've already seen it across the tours to this point, um, the reaction in the rooms and stuff like that. It's no different in London. There's a reason why we've sold this many tickets and you're this close yeah. to selling out the tour overall. 
not just of course because you're here, but of course the bill overall, Pint Glass Street Soldier, that's an yeah. incredible lineup. It's a scary lineup. It's uh, a scary, yes, yes. scary lineup, yeah. We're really good about Fuel Juice Drop as well, because of course that, that was like perfect. It was the perfect Death Mover is Harker lineup, but all the bands had like a sense of humor and stuff. Yeah. yeah. All bands have been friends like fucking years ago. We played yeah, some of the first yeah, time yeah, gigs yeah. like over ten years ago with Fuel Juice. But family so, does come first and uh, absolutely, so I don't know. But I mean people are turning up and they're still in the right vibe, they're still in the right vibe and stuff like that. No one like the hardcore fans aren't fighting with death metal fans. I think they're always getting along. Like we see people, the same people two seven to uh, paint glass are doing push-ups to party cans. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the the Venn diagram. Yeah. I mean, the crossover is there, isn't it? A hundred percent. And also, like, the thing that kind of frustrates myself about just music in general is that we are not one-dimensional people. Mm. So as I say, you can like death metal and like hardcore and like comedy things and cartoons, and you you can have multiple strands to a human being, but. As I say, melding it together under one roof can be quite difficult at times. Yeah. So it's, it's been working out amazingly well. So yeah, it's good that as I say, folk are taking it instead of it just being a strict death metal bill or a strict hardcore show, and that is it. You know. But only you get the genre placed whether you like it or not. It's part and parcel, I guess, of being a band, part of music, so people want to put you in a pigeonhole you oh, and then sure. it actually happens easier, to yeah. you oh, yeah, as well do you really care though if that's the case that you are defined as oh I don't know a death metal band and so and that's party it. slam yeah yeah, yeah I get you it. made the term yeah absolutely make it, your own in yeah. my mind like party slam first and foremost are like a brutal death metal band yeah like I started the band because I like discord I like gore guys and things like that but I think party Cannon has the appeal where because we don't have that kind of inaccessible aesthetic but mm-hmm. the music's still as brutal as those bands People discovered you like that kind of music, so mm, yeah. Uh, when we played like Bloodstock and things like that, yeah. Say I know a band called like fucking Vagil Bear Trap plays. People go, okay, I already know I don't like bro death metal, so I'm not gonna check that out. Like, and they might oh. be preaching something I don't agree with. Yeah, and blah blah blah. Like, like but uh, see, part of oh, I've not maybe heard the band. I'll check them out. Let's go see them live. Like, oh, actually, I do like this stuff. I actually, there is something in this for me. So I think it's while well, staying bro, it's kind of bridging that gap. So I don't care what people call it if as long as they like it. To me, it's always real death metal. It's always going to be gore grind. It's going to be that. Yeah. But if you want to call it death gore, if you want to call it fucking, I don't know. call it what you want as long yeah. as they show up. But I think this is the <laughs> other one that like yeah. most metal fans that I know like cartoons. Yeah. They like Courage <laughs> the Coward, the Dog, and Pokemon and video games and things like that. So it's not the biggest stretch to go. Oh, we've got a T-shirt with Polygon on it. Or we've got, as I say, like a Mario T-shirt. It's these sort of things of going like that's not the furthest stretch to go. This is going to oh like alienate our, yeah, our fans, yeah. but don't get me wrong. Since metal has been pushed so far in that extreme, and you can put that hat on whatever, every anything you want, but like yeah, I think folk do need a palate cleanser. It doesn't always have to be under that agenda. Yeah. It can still be fun, and you can have that outlet and all that sort of love, but it doesn't have to be under that agenda. Is that pretty much it? As fun as this side of it can be, getting out to play, play live, meet people, and have that fun on stage and so on, there is, of course, still the business side of things, and it comes with releasing an album, and then what follows afterwards, the pushing it, trying to get as many ears and yep, eyes yep, on it as possible. Right. Obviously, injuries are inevitable. It's been about five months now, just slightly beginning to settle in it. When you look back over the last five months, are you satisfied with the response to it so far? I'd say so, man, definitely. Like Even just pure metrics, you can see... Reach on Instagram has yeah. gone up. Reach on Spotify has gone up. Yeah. Merch sales are going up. Things like that. Uh, yeah, music. merch is mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah things yeah. like that. Fe- festival attendance is going up. It's just, just by that, dynamic is good. But fan response has been amazing. Everyone says it's their favorite album so far. Mm. And uh, I was a little bit concerned about listening because not only is the cover a bit different from what we usually do, it's an actual concept album as well. Yeah. So uh, I was a bit, a little bit of a risk in that respect. But musically, I think it's like the ultimate part again. Album like. Production wise, song wise, riff wise, everything like that. Like, it's catchy, it's brutal, it's loads of fucking breakdowns and stuff. The songs take twists and turns, so I'm pretty happy. It's the first release through Unique Leader as well, and they've not come back to us being like, we're dropping you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a positive. Yeah, so it's definitely a positive, and they've already talked about future stuff with us. So. But you are definitely uh, conscious about like that that outward look of the artwork and things like that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there was that conversation part, of like, is this party canon? Like, that is the question a lot. Like, does this fit into the Venn diagram of what we're doing?
of stuff going on to make it this yeah. way. Yeah, organised chaos in a way. That's where you go. But of course, as well, I mean, you are an artist. You're evolving as you grow older, more you learn. I think even the most hardcore part, part I kind of find, it goes back to the earliest point, would be disappointed if you weren't evolving in some way to the degree. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Exactly. You want to, like, take part again to the logical conclusion, in a way. Like, yeah. business side of things you are concerned to say it's, it's not going to hit the party canon faithful because of a different cover or concept and stuff like that so you have to push and promote it did you find yourself doing things different this time around compared to previous albums or because of the unique leader connection we definitely went harder on like online content mm -hmm. just like clips from live shows and things like that like yeah. i really focused on just kind of i wouldn't say barrel content and uh, air quotes because I think you have to have like a million something clips uh, to be uh, official about that kind of thing shareable things just reels on Instagram like memes about related to the band things like that what are actually taken from live gigs so when people say it's like oh I want to check this out this looks fun new album oh that's cool that's what oh. people expect when you go see them yeah, yeah so if you check out like I went hard on Instagram recently yeah uh, so if you go on that it's like a big representation of what the band's actually like and you're pushing out all the time which is really engaging with like the fan community as well so if people best you or they make a post of a park and just making sure I'm confident just more focus on that than ever just yeah. make sure this album was reaching more people and well, again, just purely using, I'm sorry, and then no. just purely using like streams the metric. The streams have gone up. So there's all streams we've ever had. So it must be working. There's yeah. most of the attendance we've had. So that was, that was an important thing as well. Like bigger label, bigger expectations. The band was at a kind of good point where uh, before even announcing the leader, we we're selling like big like, hometown gigs and stuff like that. We're playing big tours, big festivals. So we kind of want to not stagnate, just kind of get on it. And all that we can really do that is by reaching more people mm. and thankfully we've got a good team behind it so obviously Bailey does all our art to the yeah. design and stuff like that and we've got Danny at Kerosene Mansion we had Steve our agent and things with had Yasm PR uh, they just ran a division they were able to reach the right people get some better slots just get better, better deals and things just make sure we're like kind of carefully doing things not playing to people who are uh, who wouldn't appreciate things that not wouldn't appreciate just kind of wouldn't grow the audience if it makes sense while still keeping well, still being like a broke death metal band, so it's about a balance of that. Yeah, yeah, it's like mm. here's some really inaccessible music with a dumb like uh, image, a fun image, but let's try and push with as many people as possible. So it's, it's a balance of that. It's hard, but I think with this album, we've been doing it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's clear you have. Well, I would also say as well, like, wasn't it um, Volumes of Vomit that you were saying that like they they were your first legitimate music videos? Yes. And yes, that was how many years in? So as I say, it's the turning of the tide. The volumes of Vomit had a couple of music videos out there. This new release has had like multiple singles with uh, with the music videos getting put out with them. So mm. again, it's like locking in them things again that not everybody uses Spotify, not everybody uses YouTube. But if you do, there's this thing on there that you can have. Yeah, exactly. and blah blah blah. So yeah, there's been that slight changing of the tide and mentality in that thinking as well, considering there was nothing there before. Yeah. Until like the last maybe like four or five years, we're like strictly like a DIY band, and I kind of had the image that we would just stay in the brutal death metal of like circuit, and I wasn't like I didn't really believe like a band that sounded like this could open brutal assault or like blitz song things like that or play like the garage things like that. So when I kind of thought about it and thought what what we had, it's like okay, here's ways to push it, and when we started getting these offers and stuff, it's like people care about us, like people yeah. are actually into what we're doing. It's not just a thing that makes makes me happy. It's a thing that makes other people, other people it happy. starts yeah. with that yeah. Yeah. it starts with that and then hopefully it goes on to the other one are you keeping yourself grounded though considering you are seeing this rise and while it may not be meant to you know go, like uh, a rocket taking off it is a gradual and slow and clearly defined rise I guess you kind of have to be grounded if you play in a band called Party Canada <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all your songs are about fucking uh, like anime villains and fucking horrible sex acts and things so yeah. you can't be you you're not going to be to the lowest yeah. common denominator yeah but, uh, Oh, I think part of it is we were like a DIY band for like 10 years. I, I booked everything, I did all the promotion, I wrote the majority of the songs and stuff like that. So 
I was there, I could see it drive your eyes. So, well, since it was overnight, it was kind of a slow trek as well. That definitely helps. Uh, I've seen all stages, of it. like we've slept on floors, we've toured Europe in my fucking mom's car and things mm. like that. We toured America in a Tyrol Corolla, uh, crammed in like this. So, things like that. Like, and yeah, you that definitely helps. Them, yeah. I, I didn't go from releasing something on Spotify to a tour bus the next day. So, I think I think that kind of helps. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long, long, long period of time, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Dude, don't know, I mean, I'm 32 now, I've been doing this since Now, this is Ozzy Osbourne, and in his head are random cards of everything and anything, including main submissions by bands and artists that he's spoken to over the years. Okay. okay. I'm just going to pull some out of random. Go on, sir. Some of them are serious, some of them are very, very so, silly. We begin with. Are these questions then? Yeah. Okay, go. What is a skill or talent you wish you had? Playing music. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, skill or talent, though, I wish mm. I had. I don't know, I'm too tired for that. That's, that's too, that's too yeah. mad for me right now. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's alright. Do you enjoy theme parks? No. No? Yeah, yeah, to a point, to a point. To a point, what's the point? It depends on my fucking kids are in, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is. Or like, I'll, the yeah. odd caveat with, I've not gone to that Nintendo world in Japan, but like, yeah, there's like one maybe, but like Alton Towers, all that, like, nah, fuck off. Like, can't be fucked with that. Fair enough, right. You're at a party, it's beginning to die. What song are you putting on to revive it? Out in the Fields by Gary Moore and Phil Lynott. Yeah, oh, okay. People will love that song. Yeah. Or No Easy Way Out by, is it Robert Tenner? Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck it, do the plug. High five, Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> As a room clearer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get <laughs> fucking rid of everyone. Tell me the worst joke you know. Which will have bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Or if you're going to stick with puns, then it's like, uh, you heard of the magical tractor? Turned into a field. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the Dirty Denims, which is a N- uh, Netherlands rock band, oh, asked, yeah. who is the most famous person you've met and were they nice to you? Oh, um, I met Robbie Coltrane in my friend's dad's house one time. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah he was pretty nice. Okay, Robbie Coltrane. Alright, cool. Um, so, I don't think I've met anyone re- like really famous, but I met the like the CEO of Rockstar Video Games, and he was a fucking bellend. Really? <laughs> he's, he's not even one to believe that. No, yeah, I, I wouldn't piss on him if he was on fire. Damn, that's he's so now got a, he's He then got fired from there, and now he's got his own video game company, and it's called Everywhere. Uh-huh. Do not buy anything to do with him. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> there you go, I'll, I'll happily say that. Damn, alright, the dead have risen. Your only weapon is what's around you right now. What are you grabbing? My skull helmet. Absolutely. Is it heavy? Is it weighty? No, no. I just want to be post-apocalyptic and look <laughs> rad. <laughs> like, Probably you need to snap some coat hangers and fashion some kind of fucking stake out there. You could fuck someone up with your base. I mean, if it was vampires, just coat hangers would be good, right? But yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, spring, summer, autumn, or winter. What's your season? Autumn. Oh, autumn, yeah. yeah? Yeah, always, always about a spooky season, man. Eh? Yeah, spooky season and damp. Yeah, I'm good with that. A couple more. What's the great piece of advice you've ever you've received? A great piece of advice. Uh, make a prototype. If yeah. Got an idea, just make it, and then you can go from there. Yeah. Before fix anything, take a picture of it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. What's a fandom that frightens you a little? Mm. Oh. Well, this will be explained if I just say it outright. Um, the people that go to porn conventions. Oh, oh damn. Yeah, like, that's not a... not people that consume porn. Mm-hmm. That actually want to go to the convention. Yeah, that, that's a bit of it. Because I I used to work in the sex trade, uh, just working in the stores, and if it vibrated or had boobs on it, I sold it. <laughs> right. So a yearly uh, adventure would go to these like conventions, and no. Okay. No, 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 not my type of people. They scare me a lot. I'm gonna say. Uh... Can you say political fandoms? Like people who are just like ultra into any sort of politics? Like, yeah. Kind of like, could I you guess see, it's a fandom, right, innit? I guess, but you just get people like a politician who say something that's like easily debunked and they just won't accept it. And, and then they're just like, oh no, here's this and that. And like, but I mean, like wild, like absolutely wild, and they'll spend their time online preaching that and like trolling people about mm-hmm. it and things like that. And like that, that is their personality. Like I, I know people who have like an actual like politician stuff, like a bar themed around politicians and like Carl. Not as a joke, not even ironically. I was like, this is kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Alright, we'll do one more then. Uh, what is a comedy film that always makes you laugh, no matter how many times you see it? 
Oh, we spoke about it a lot in the van. Uh, South Park, bigger, longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the best musicals of all time, and it's like one of the most quotable films of all time. Yeah. Did though, always super bad as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's a film. I like, guess kind of hard to think about, but uh, things like Brass Eye and Peep Show, like I think about those all the time. Yeah, every yeah. Day. So uh, that always makes life. We were also talking about what was it, uh, the thick of it, and I can't remember what the movie was called of that. Is it in the loop or something like that? Oh, I didn't remember the movie. What was it like? Uh, it was, it was like when a... they went to America. The same oh, cast, yeah. but then they go and get the guy from The Sopranos and all that lot is in it. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. Really shit. And I'm <laughs> sure it's called In the Loop, but again, I, I might be misquoting this name. But yeah, that's also like. Um, well, thank you guys so much for giving me the time that you have here. I hope the show is incredible tonight. Obviously, be there, see it firsthand, yep. and the rest of the tour. I hope it yep. goes wonderfully and yep. safe. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.